You should be warned, the upcoming episode will be full of unfiltered, off-the-cuff discussion. As such, you should consider this your spoiler warning. Hello, my name is Kyle. My name is Ryan. And Ryan is very dramatic. Well, we got the videos. I right? know, I love it. Uh, and when our powers combine, we form Experience Grand Podcast. Hooray! Hey! Man, this... So if you can't that tell... That was a horrible start. If you God can't tell, audience... We're, well, see, but he's going to put cr- a crowd noise in later. <laughs> no, he's not. That's the thing. We're just going to let this play out <laughs> limply. He'll put, yeah, just he'll put, wait. Oh, my he'll God. Put, wait. He'll put cricket sound And then effects. people are like... Ryan, our podcast isn't that bad. It's <laughs> come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, we we got a friend here. We do. You want to introduce him? You might know him as Dan from the episode where we talked about Dan and his <laughs> VR game, Life of Lawn by Dan. Well, there's a <laughs> yeah. There's a whole team involved. There's a team involved. Yes, but well, we yes, know it's but thank you. Dan. <laughs> oh my god! No, no, no. 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 It's a team effort. It's like a team this effort. podcast. Team. Ryan. Team. There's no I. Yeah, you do a lot of it, and I don't <laughs> do anything. So, Dan. hey, we, we're joined here again with Dan. We drove, we went home, turned around, and drove back four hours one way to bring Dan back. Wait, for did you season. really? Yeah, dude. It's a hell of a trip, man. You went, wait, wait, you went back four hours? We went home four hours, turned right around, came back. It's an eight hour trip. I'm just confused. to see you again. I feel like this yeah. math design. So we, we we drove four hours to do the second VR. Oh, episode. yeah, yeah. Then we and left. Then we came all the way back. Then we left and then immediately got oh. home, turned right around, came back, and now we're here I, to see you again. Man. We're all in the same clothes. Wait, I hope again. whatever we talk about is good today. Well, what are we talking about, Dan? Let's have you introduce us. Oh, what are we going to discuss here, buddy? Well, uh, it's my favorite topic, memento. Uh, not momento. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I hear Momento has and a really bad mo- trailer. It's Momento. not Momento, <laughs> and, he, and Andy has seen. It's the, it's the he's movie. seen the trailer. Momento. He's like, I know what the movie's about. But anyways, I've seen this movie a dozen times, thirteen times. I've seen it back. It, it, I've seen the chronological version. I've seen the director's cut. That's cool. I, I do want to come back and touch on that. Though. Yeah, you've seen it now eleven times, right, Ryan? I say like eight, not seven, eight, nine, okay. somewhere in there. You watched Close it once, and then you and I briefly talked about it, and you watched it again, right? Yeah. Okay. I've seen this movie one time. It's my very first time seeing it. And uh, I'm excited to talk about this movie. And isn't it weird that there's a movie that you can see this many times and, par- and yeah. like pick well, up no, yeah. more and more things from it? And like, I'm, there's not very many movies you can do that. I would say like uh, the the other one, Primer, is probably a good one that you could. I like Primer. You could a say lot. you could yeah. watch that one probably a lot of times. Yeah. And, and there's and, a, a and new thing every time. Uh, the other one I liked, uh, I think I've figured out, but uh, I always. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is kind of one of those <laughs> yeah. where, like, it's you, pretty trippy. You you kind of see new little things happening here and there every time you see it. You know what? Yeah. You know another one I'll say is Back to the Future. Like, sure, of I've course, seen that yeah. one so many times, yeah. and every single time I feel like I'm catching new stuff or or seeing things in a different light. Maybe maybe yeah. because I'm a little older. Maybe I'm identifying with different characters, but Back to the Future is it's something special to me. Do you think Marty should have banged his mom? <laughs> Well, would he have become his own father? Uh, would he be? Wait, is it his own father or his own grandpa? <laughs> no, I mean, that's the, that's, 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 that's the, the whole song. Futurama that's the song. thing, right? Yeah. He becomes his own grandpa. So I'm told. I haven't seen that, that episode, but I, I, I understand it's a famous episode. It's a really good it one. Is. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, if, if Leah Thompson is your mom, you fuck your mom. I would totally do that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's no, that's Leah Thompson it. was, uh, she was in her prime back oh, yeah. then. Oh, yeah. We were talking about Caroline in the City she, earlier, she fucked, weren't we? She, she actually Howard hasn't really aged, so, to be honest with yeah. you. No, though. no, she still looks So I don't know why same. I could say her prime. I guess she's always in her prime. She's I would just say be, prime maybe She like will be like in her wise. coffin just past yeah. her prime. I tell you, Gina Davis wishes she was Leah Thompson. The elite, uh, Gina Davis has not aged well, is what you're saying. No, not at all. Poor girl. You know who has aged very well, too? Marissa Tomei. Oh, yeah, of course. It's God Marissa damn. Tomei. She was like... I mean, can we just talk about Marissa Tomei? She was topless like four years ago in... Which movie? The Wrestler. That's probably oh, yeah, that's ago. right. She that's more than four years, yeah. 
That was a, that was another great director, Darren Off- Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> but no. Uh, so bringing this back on topic, you know, we're talking about Chris Nolan today. Yeah, Christopher did, Nolan did me to it. Sure. directed. No. Yes, yes. This movie, yes. Memento. <laughs> Memento, please. Was this uh, was this his first big movie? I think it was right. Yeah, there was following before this. Following was his first, yeah, and then following. Memento. This is like his big film. He had his indie film, which was following. Got noticed. This is his first kind of studio film. Yeah. And what did he have after this? Was this right into Batman? After no. this was uh, uh, Insomnia, I believe. Yes, that's okay. right. Insomnia. With Robin Williams, and yep. I can't think of the lead character right now. Was this uh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. I think blank it's too. Al Pacino. Yeah, I think it was. Was Pacino. this another like serious Robin Williams flick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Robin Williams like one played hour photo. Same kind of um, some, very similar role. Kind of, yeah. But not, I would say not as interesting guy. actually as no. one hour photo. No, I really liked one hour. photo. I really do too. I didn't want to, and then I saw it. and I was like, <laughs> I, I do like this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was weird and mm-hmm. and. I think Robin Williams when he went surreal. against his. Uh, what he became typecasted as was always very interesting. A lot of good stuff because Death to Smoochie was kind of against type and Man, was fantastic. And then uh, World's Greatest Dad, if you saw that, that it was uh, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Of oh, all really? People. Good yeah, point. and it's about like a teacher who's just like <laughs> had it with the world, had it with his son, and the son commits suicide while masturbating, kind of a. <laughs> David Carradine situation, right? Autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah. Okay. And 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 so what he does is, uh, his son's just this vile person. Writes this hateful fucking note, just like you're the fucking worst dad. And Robin Williams like has a snap, and then he changes the note to say like, you're the greatest dad, and all this. And then it becomes like the town like feeling sympathy for him and having to deal with like all this weird stuff. But it's like a dark, dark dark comedy wow and it's fantastic and like robin williams was capable of so much and yet he was always just let's put him as the funny man in this well i mean no i mean he he definitely did enough serious material though i mean he definitely did quite a bit well dead poet society yeah good morning for sure for sure he definitely had a lot well good morning vietnam was he was i feel like (laughs) kind of just slipping into being robin williams like i I feel like that's true good morning vietnam was just robin williams being the surrounding of Robin Williams yeah. is more serious, but yeah. you're right. He yeah. is still kind of just the jokey joke man. Yeah, yeah. But, but no, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, he did a lot of good non-comedic work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe that's part partially why it always felt so serious or sincere because you'd seen him as the funny man so much. And it's like when the clown takes off his makeup, he goes and cries. <laughs> you know, he goes home and has a sad moment. Uh, and so it kind of feels like that. Yeah. You know? Because here's this guy, Mork and Mindy, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I remember. He drank orange juice through his fingers. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Mork and Mindy. In Mork and Mindy? That's how I, 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 I remember watching as a kid, but I, I don't remember the details of drinking orange well, that's juice. That's what I remember, because I would always do that as a kid. I'd put my <laughs> fingers in, and I was like, oh, I, I just remember it. Nanu Nanu. Oh, of course, yeah. Yes, yeah. And then he he traveled in an egg, mm-hmm. I remember. Well, so let's about, say, m- about this m- our, memento. I was, I, this is our fucking intro topic. <laughs> no. We'll just talk about fucking Robin Williams for our intro topic. Right, right, That's right. Fine. Even though he's not in the movie and it has nothing to do not with the all. movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was in a Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah, that followed the one we're talking about. And I guess I guess I should say spoilers, by the way. If you haven't seen Memento, <laughs> oh, there's no you should way go watch Memento it, yeah. and then come back and watch this. So here's the thing: you care enough about Memento that you want to watch. I think I'm Memento. the last person in the world to probably see Memento. Mm-hmm. I just want to say. Um, no, because there will be people wa- that watching this who uh, go, "Oh, right. I haven't seen Memento. I need to go watch." Andy that. has seen the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> like Andy, <laughs> he has seen the trailer. No, he needs to uh, watch a fucking movie. So here's the thing: like, that's rem- true. You can't judge by the trailer. It's not. Even, He's like, I know how the even movie the goes. I'm gonna say like, <laughs> so three times in my life now with Memento, I I've had the same life experience, and uh, I I will say one of those, and I will save one because it's a, a movie we're gonna talk about upcoming in a separate episode. Um, but what? like. I feel like this movie, by the time I saw it, it was overhyped to me so much that, like, 
Uh, it, it didn't live up to no its way it potential. Could yes. And the other movie like that that I, I also saw just recently was Requiem for a Dream. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, I'd heard so many people say right. so many things about this movie. Yeah. And then when I saw it, I, you're like, oh, it's just a really depressing fucking it, movie. Like that was that was it. Like so. Right. Uh, uh, spoilers. Like Memento. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. At the end of the, I'm, I'm very yeah. lukewarm to this experience, and I'm I'm very excited to talk to you both because you both yeah. really really like Let's, this movie. Um, that's a, that's good. Yeah. Let's give kind of your basic how you feel about the film without okay. any spoilers or anything. Why not? And then Why we'll not do spoilers? A, I think we're we'll do a, people we'll do a spoilers. It. We'll do a little bump. Yeah. We'll do a music bump like we typically do. We'll find like a music piece and then we'll just go straight into spoilers. By I think we should do the the theme from like we're oh, for so we're not would you, okay. So, so I'll give you the non spoiler yeah, so version. Everything after you uh, said, Kyle, would you recommend it to somebody who has not seen Memento? Me personally, I would probably not. Okay. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. That's really, I thought we were okay. gonna deal with the situation. Well, I would yeah. definitely, of course. Yes. Uh, and I know that Ryan will as well. Probably yeah. recommend I, it. Yeah. So it's not I mean, very tight. Okay. About that. So I guess I would say, uh, why would what kind of person would you be that you would like Memento? I think if you're the type of person who liked Back to the Future, but that's not a lot of people like Back to the Future. But if you like if you like movies that are um, more about the clockwork mechanism of how the movie uh, works and, and are like a movie that has like a really um, put together script that's that's kind of um, unfolds in a really mechanical way in a very interesting way, then you're going to like Memento because it's not necessarily, it is a movie about the characters, but, and it is a movie about one main character, but he's sort of, it's about the, the mechanism that he's work, that he's kind of operating within that makes the story interesting. I don't know if you would agree with me on that, Ryan. Yeah. How do you, th- how you feel about that? That was very succinctly said. Uh, yeah. So exactly. that's not for everybody, actually, though. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of people want uh, a lot more human in their stories. Uh, Christopher and, Nolan, you do not go to for human uh, stories. No, I, I mean, think, not not so much. I mean, not for like real human, I yeah. think. I, I think, think he's more I like, think you said it perfectly. You wrapped up Nolan in a nutshell, which is. Very mechanical. Yeah, but, it is. But it's I just love that. Smartly about him. done. It's very yes, mechanical. Very smartly done. And if you know the craft and how it typically is, yes. you can appreciate how Christopher Nolan does it because it is very yes. unique. Yes. But it is technical. He it has is, taken a specific mm-hmm. way that he wants to, to build movies and to say to yeah. tell stories. And in it, you can't do everything. You can't tell it every mm-hmm. single way. And that's why we have different directors. And we, yeah, it's great. <laughs> so. Um, but but for people who like a really uh, methodical and well put together script and story and things like that, they're gonna really like Memento because all of the eyes are dotted, all the T's are crossed, and everything is nicely put together. And that's something I appreciate in a film is when uh, when you can't really when you have to watch it dozens of times to even find any kind of flaw. Um, and I, I really appreciate that kind of like really tight writing, you know, yeah. waterproof writing. So to I, me, I like Memento that. has it. Waterproof writing. Yeah. God damn. I feel like I'm done with experience grind and Dan's going to take over. Because <laughs> you have said everything I could have said, but I think maybe more eloquently and better. No, I want to hear because from your perspective, though. I mean, no, that's, every, that's exactly it's, everyone has right. a different perspective and there's no, it's not about zero to a hundred. It's yeah. sort of, it's about red versus blue. You know, I want to hear what, you, what your thoughts on it. Are. It is exactly as you said. I think it is. It is a story that is not anything necessarily special, but it's done in such a special way that shows so much care and attention and just, man, uh, it, this movie is a, a masterwork of editing. Um, mm-hmm. Christopher yeah, Nolan, I, I think, is always attributed as maybe a better editor than a director. Um, I could see that, yeah. And, and but, this but, I mean, is he's... the movie that proves it. This is an editing masterpiece. Yeah. It is artfully done how stories intertwine and then catch up and then you learn things like every 10 minutes there's like a new twist on things yes and it's always very surprising and funny and i feel pretty earnest for the most part and you know it just it's it's like one of those four quadrant movies where everything i could want in a film is touched on and maybe this film has shortcomings in some areas but maybe those areas don't really matter to me, possibly. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, the areas that it has sh- shortcomings 
come necessarily from the kind of film yeah. that it's trying to be. So I don't necessarily feel like they're shortcomings. Mm -hmm. If you tried to fill in those gaps, you would have be making a different kind of film, and mm -hmm. people, it, it just wouldn't be what it is. Agreed. And so what the film is it as it through. is, is like a film catered to the film I like. Yes. Like, this hits everything I want in a movie. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. So, two out of three. <laughs> it, you know, two out of three doctors two of three, recommend. Two out of three uh, let's say that, yes, you should see this film. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's a pretty good endorsement. That's, um, that's, that's better than half. Better than half. So You are two-thirds likely to enjoy this you, movie. You can't go wrong with that statistic. Yeah. So, so we're going to do a little musical break. This is going to be from the score Memento. Uh, and then after we get back, just full spoilers, full probably spoilers. lots of tangents. Details. We're not gonna have any coherent We're getting structure. Into it. We're oh, just gonna man. I can't wait deep dive it's into this shit. Good. So this will be fine. Yeah. We are back. That was uh, a really fun musical piece that uh, we totally know what it is, and it sounds great. I mean, it sounded awesome. Yeah. Why, uh, right, Kyle? What, what did you think about the music? It was the best thing ever, and I have the best boner because of that song. Well, it's funny you say that because I have Speaking a boner. Of boners. Yeah. But right? it's not for a song, it's for a printing press company. Oh my God, really? Yeah, it's weird. It's can, weird how hard I am for this company. <laughs> can I can I make you harder and talk about this printing press company? Is that cool? Oh man. Oh god. Are you ready for that? I mean, I'm going to give you the biggest I want boner. it. Okay. But I don't want ready? it. Ready? Ryan, did you know? What? That in case of emergency press, is a Bloomington, Indiana print shop that was founded in 2009. <laughs> Is that dick hard? Yeah, it's pretty hard. It's gonna get harder. You ready? Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> they provide screen printed goods for <laughs> bands. Oh, it's too late. Ah! Record labels, ah! businesses, <laughs> artists, organizations, and so many more. And they have a focus on custom yeah. projects and quick turnaround time at yeah. fair and affordable prices. <laughs> From custom T-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, and other printed apparel to vinyl record jackets, tote bags, koozies, and so much more, they're capable of sp screen printing your design. Onto nearly anything, Ryan. Anything, Kyle? Even your boner. <gasps> they can screen print my boner? Dude, if you can keep it hard, they can screen print it. I'm telling you. As Damn. long as you keep reading me this advertisement, I'm going to be hard. Well, are you in for a surprise? Because not only can they do all that for your boner, they can also <laughs> perform design work. If you have an idea in your head, but you have no way to transfer it into a physical form, and they are willing and able to help you every step of the way. My but head's Kyle, always a physical form. What if I want my design in Comic Sans? They can do it, but they won't be happy. Oh. But, but if you're paying them, like any good whore, they'll do anything for the money. So, if you have money and you need anything printed, t-shirts for your kid's fucking dance recital, a fucking custom tote bag to carry your groceries in so you can show off that you saved the whales as well as don't use plastic bags. Whatever gets your fucking lady clit hard or your man dick. Just go. What about your man clit or your lady dick? Hey, that man. too. We're, we're, we're non gender binary here on Experience Grind, okay? That's, you know, that's a good place you to be. You don't need a dick to grind. <laughs> that's, that's true. If you that's true. are looking to grind on anything, please go to www.incaseofemergencypress.com and get your project started today. Don't wait until it's an actual emergency. Hey, we got through that. All right. If you would also like to... Uh, Will you mark a number on that with your pen, please, <laughs> so that we know it's four? 
Because they only paid for a certain amount of spots, you see. Mm. This is probably going to get cut. And they're totally cool with all that kind of I mean, we, they haven't said anything yet, so... And you guys have done similar shit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We always do tangents. I think it makes the read more enjoyable. I like it. Yeah, I like it. It makes people actually... If they're okay with it, yeah. t- that's if you, awesome. If you're just reading fucking bullshit, people are going to zone out or skip through it. Make it fun. That's how Wayne's World was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little. Yellow. Different. <laughs> It's like people just sell out, man, and that's just like so sad. It's like they only do things if you if you give them money, and that's like it's so all, sad. They only want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like an Adidas shirt, an Adidas hat. All right, man. I'm ready to talk about this fucking movie. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. um I want. What didn't you like about it? I, I, I'd like to talk. I'd yes. Like to start from the bad. So again. At, it's not that it was bad, but overall this movie was just sort of eh to me. Like why? Uh, so yeah, Kyle, why didn't you like the thing we like, Kyle? <laughs> no, so, no, no, no. I um, think, tell me why didn't you like the thing? It's I great. Like. So, I think you can talk about it. So it's great. <laughs> That's it. I, it's great you because I've I've been thinking about it since you guys went on this huge tangent before the bumper. Uh, you gave me the perfect reason. So as a whole, you said this was just like. At the end, like uh, a sort of mediocre movie that helps you see more behind the scenes. And like, it's cool because it's told in a different aspect. But if you look at it from the forward way, you've seen this movie outside of the amnesia aspect. Like, well, it's a, no- sure, it's a noir movie. It's very no- and it's I, noir is an old I, genre. I love noir films. Like, yeah. They, I fucking enjoy the hell out of them. And it's, again, it's very old. It's so weird that this one didn't click with me. But for some reason, like, I could never fully get involved in this character or any of the character struggles. Well, do you like noir though? I do love noir. You do like noir. Yes, I'm very. So you just didn't like this? this exactly. Like one. I love of, the Maltese Falcon. Because you know Falcon. noir is like always yeah. the same shit. Yes, like, it, over and over. It again. follows that same pattern. Yeah. Um, and maybe that is what set this one off for me is that it's trying to turn the pattern on its head by by taking it backwards and also forwards. But and, that's kind of what but I think. That's it like does. That's we like about it. Fair but, enough. But I yeah. get. So what about so you? See, you didn't nothing really connected with the characters at all. Well, the, with you? I, I really enjoyed Teddy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I Teddy is really Joey fucking Pants. Joe yeah. Pantoliano. Joey Pants. Pel- is, Pantoliano. Yeah, he's fucking great. He was Lenny. the best part of this movie. I wanted yeah. more of that guy. Yeah, no, like, he was great. He was great. And uh, I love that even though he's like some of a, a semi crooked cop, yeah. he's like really the only good character in the movie. The only wait, one. What? <laughs> like for like. Wait, wait. I want to talk about that. Okay, so like he's like. <laughs> He's the only one that actually cares about uh, the main character. Wait, what are you talking about? No. Okay. I you don't, don't think, think so? You haven't seen the movie enough good. times. Maybe not. Man. None you of them are seen. good. So, like, he's nope, using there's him. no good guy in this movie. He's yeah. using him to his own no, advantages, no, but he yeah. still likes the guy. No, no. he. I mean, he... He treats Leonard like a pawn, man. I How mean, many times does so. he fuck with him? He has fucked with him constantly. And it, it, like, he has evidence that he went through an entire completely different scenario with Leonard. He does have the picture of him he has after Leonard, the killing. Exactly. Of, and it's been of, going on for a while, they said. It's hard to say how long yeah. Teddy has been fucking with, with Leonard. And I think that's what's interesting about how when Leonard finally uh, kind of sets the dominoes in motion for him to kill Teddy, you kind of wonder, he's like, you almost wonder, how long has Teddy been fucking with Leonard? Mm-hmm. Has has Have there been multiple drug dealers? Have there been multiple people? That well, he's I think that's killed? implied that you there know, has been, yeah. Cause... Well, but you know what Teddy said to him? He says, Leonard says, I'm not a killer. He goes, I know you're not. That's why you're so good at it. Yeah. To me, that says he's done this multiple times oh, I would times think so. Before. I think it's implied that he has. Yeah, so um, so Teddy is the ultimate bad guy. He's the guy yeah. who's using Leonard over and over and over again to kill other people. And so finally Leonard catches on and he's like, "Holy shit, I'm stuck in this cycle. This guy is trying is framing me or using me over and over again to kill people. I'm going to you, you want to be my John G? Okay, you're going to be my John G." And he writes down the the thing and he goes and gets the tattoo and that's the end of the movie. So he sets the whole thing in motion to finally you, uh, end Teddy's manipulation. Do you think that's the end of Guy Pierce's arc? Is like, oh, he killed Teddy, and now that's it. Or do you think he's still gonna keep refreshing and then killing new? Like, yeah, he's I don't know. I, I guess it really depends to find this killer because that's the only thing he has to live <laughs> right. for anymore. Well, I think uh, here's the thing. 
he he's gonna come to at, at the end of the whole movie, and mm-hmm. and he's gonna have a photo with a dead guy, and he's not gonna have any other notes that kind of relate to what's going on. Natalie, he maybe he'll go back and see Natalie, maybe who knows, but he's really not gonna have any more leads, I don't think. Unless he starts inventing them from the book that he has, and he starts yeah. a whole new sequence, and it's it's entirely possible he could continue. I've always read it as in this is just a process that's going to go yeah. on forever. Maybe, but maybe you were talking about it in a very different way. I thought that was interesting that this became kind of like a, a high. I found out about you, Teddy. It was yeah, like a revenge thing that we learned at the end was like, oh, this was his plan all along. Was to get it, not just coincidentally the pieces fell in place like I thought and like kind of Teddy damned himself with like the, well he kind of did yeah, I mean like by, Teddy by set his own grave he really movie. did by letting Leonard momentarily by telling yeah. Leonard hey I fucked you over I've been manipulating you mm-hmm. by doing that he gave Leonard enough information to make a decision mm-hmm. that would set the wheels in motion to cause him to get killed yes mm-hmm. so he Kenny Teddy did really did cause his own death yeah I'm gonna disagree here <laughs> okay. What? With, 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 with We've whole covered last, a lot of. Ground. I know. I know that that <laughs> that Teddy set his own demise in action. Okay. Because Natalie did the exact same fucking thing, and it's vehemently shown that he forgets everything because mm-hmm. he is desperately searching for this pin to remember that she fucked him over too. Okay. And as soon as the door slams, it's over. Well, no, and it wasn't he, over. He he tried really hard to get a pin. It was like the exactly. moment of that. But okay. when she slams the door and starts to come back in, it's, it's the reset trigger. Let me, let me just say something here. The Natalie subplot is just a distraction. from you think? Okay. Yeah, it is. It's okay. a subplot. It's what's going on in the middle between the time when Leonard uh, writes down the tattoo and goes and gets the tattoo of John G.'s license plate and when he actually gets the envelope from Natalie at the end of the movie slash the beginning of the movie and when he realizes, I found you, you fuck, you know, and then he, he, he writes, me, uh, he, he is the one, kill him, okay, on the, uh, on the Polaroid. On the picture of him, yeah. So the Natalie subplot and, and um, Dodd and, and all that is a distraction from the beginning and the end of the movie or the beginning, the end in the beginning of the movie. So um, you're made to think that but, they are involved with this John G. murder case. Well, and then you learn, yeah, this th- John G. murder case isn't really an issue. No, it's not. This it, is not what the, the story. The is the Natalie Dodd situation is meant to teach us more about who Leonard is, yeah. what's going on with Leonard, why should we care, and 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 how are people using Leonard and things like that. And then when it finally comes to the reveal at the end that Teddy is using Leonard and manipulating him and things like that, we've already seen that before. Yeah. We've seen that with Natalie. And then at the final, in the final end, we see Leonard manipulate even himself, you know. So uh, this whole story is about people manipulating Leonard, and finally we see that even Leonard manipulates himself. Well, uh, I mean, it goes to the point that they bring up several times, which is, like, memory is fallible, too. Like, right. Like, memory doesn't mean it happened. What is anything? Right. Like, it's the, me writing down a post-it is the same as memory. It's all fallible. It, it is all subjective, and that's what the story is here. You are led to believe certain things about people, and then 20 minutes later, you find out, oh, wait, that's not quite right. Right. And that's constantly what the story is doing with its characters and the plot. And yeah. I, I think will, that's the mo- I wanna, main theme here. Yes. I want to jump in because I will say, already you're kind of turning me. <laughs> For real. All right. But so here's, here's my reasoning. Because you say the entire movie is about how everybody is using Leonard, mm-hmm. which is true. Because And they even show this in the smaller aspect. With the guy that runs the hotel. Yes. Uh, it's absolutely. 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 He rips him off. Yeah. 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 Because he can. Right. Because yeah. he can. And he knows he can. Yeah. And Leonard doesn't even care. He's no. like, well, sure, you know you can. So That's right. I'm, At least you were honest about it. I'm coming back around. <laughs> you don't have to be that honest. Because it is showing <laughs> right, us right, even right. on that small scale, everybody who realizes they can yeah. does take advantage Remember of Remember the Leonard. spitting bet? Remember Natalie and the yeah. spitting bet and how she spit in his drink? Uh, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't remember. And he doesn't that remember it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, in the pens, of course. So there, there are lots of situations where, where he's just like, "Fuck," you know, <laughs> like I don't know what to think now. I don't know who to believe or what to believe. I do have. I, 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 so what we haven't really talked about is like kind of the story structure, which is like you see 
10 minutes of the story. Yeah. And then the next time you catch up with the story, you see the 10 minutes that came right before that story. Well, so, it's like an intersecting, like, ribbon. Yeah. It's like... So there's they, the end of the be, movie, you'd and, be the, get, and you're the black getting and like, whites that move towards meeting in the middle. At yeah. the end. And then it meets D in the middle e, at the end. Yes. You get yeah. D from E, and then C to D, and then B to C. There are charts online if you, yeah. you want to look at this up. So it's complicated, but it also opens up some very interesting things. Like Leonard will wake up in the shower and be like, oh, oh am, am I drunk? Am I drunk? No, I don't feel drunk. And, and you think, well, maybe he's drunk. But then you see before, like, how yeah. you know the shower is very That's right. different. Or, That's right. Like one of my my favorite scenes is when he's in the chase and he's like, yeah, he's oh, like, I'm chasing. Who am I chasing? Oh, wait, that guy's he's chasing, chasing me. me. And then right. he like turns about and yes. runs around. And there's some really clever moments. I did like that part. Edited. That was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I do have some serious, severe questions. So yeah, go ahead. My biggest one is all right. So after he kills the drug dealer, dude, yeah. I can't remember his name. Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, mm-hmm. so Jimmy. Jimmy Grants. Why the fuck does yeah. he take his clothes and his car? He doesn't know. Um, well, he said he'd rather be mistaken for a dead guy than a criminal or whatever than a murderer. Okay. So he he figured it's better to take Jimmy's clothing mm-hmm. uh, and be mistaken for Jimmy than to be mistaken for, for the lumberjack that killed mm-hmm. him with a tire iron. Yeah, whatever you know. I'm just saying lumberjack because uh, you know what shirt. he's got to make. He's got to make f- decisions in 15 minutes, and they're usually pretty fucking. Wacky impulsive. Yeah. and impulsive, yeah. sure. not the greatest. Uh, so that just happened to be one that he that he uh, made. And of course, when he when the when, and the good example of this kind of scenario is when the 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 window gets shot in, <laughs> and then later on Teddy knows that the window's been shot in, and he asks him to roll the window up, and he rolls the window up, and he goes, "I can get that fixed for you," you know. And it's like Teddy knows Teddy knows what's going on, mm-hmm. you know. I really I really like that. Trinity and Cypher from the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. They still hate each other in this alternate universe. Yeah, no, that's it's, they, it's they fucking work, a great they work against. I love other. and those two movies were made like a year apart. Yeah, yeah. And they're both in them, and that's just fucking great. And I love the Matrix, and I this love took Memento. This place in the Matrix. It was just like a <laughs> it's a simulation that they're uh, running. Yeah. It's a training Man, simulation. I love that <laughs> idea, and I love thinking like, about like what could that mean? Like, what if this was before they joined? The, yeah, you know. Neo and the Matrix. In real life, this whole movie was like two seconds of their eyes fluttering. Like, yeah. Oh man, I, I never thought of that. Like, what if this could exist in the Matrix universe? Right? Right. That's great. But for like, Teddy is the best. I love that. Teddy's man. amazing. He's so fucking good. This is probably my favorite Joey Pant- Pantoliano he role. Yeah, he was better than the, better than in the Matrix because yeah. he didn't have nearly I as still much like Cypher in the Matrix, to work with. Yeah, he doesn't have yeah. a lot, and there's just not a lot of him. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. man, was isn't he like this b- beautiful combination of like creepy? But funny and yeah. like you never quite strange. know how to. Yeah, feel you about don't know. You don't trust him. You don't sure. trust him at, at all. But even but though it, you want to like, like what him, what is he thinking? Yeah. He, like I'm thinking of like Game of Thrones level. Like where is he? Where does he? Fit Not Littlefinger. Um, but I the, mean, the bald guy. <laughs> Varys, Varys maybe? yeah, Varys. Man. Maybe he's Varys. Because like you, you know. like Varys, but like how much do you trust Varys? Zero. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. he, it's this weird thing. Like. All right, so yeah, we likable work... but untrustworthy, exactly, and a little bit un- off-putting. Yes, kind of, yes, yeah. makes you feel weird when you see him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, totally. Yeah, great, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and he always bursts in the door like <laughs> Lenny, and it's like over and over again, Lenny, Lenny. Um, I like when uh, he cho- he's sitting in the car <laughs> after uh, Natalie's house, and he just fucking starts choking him out. He's like, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, "I'm in your pocket, man." <laughs> The Sandy Koufax story. Yes, I fucking know it. So Leonard is Sandy, right? Sammy, Sammy Jenkins. Sammy Jenkins. No, he, he, he is not Sammy. No, he is not Sammy Jenkins. You don't think so? That's a no. completely different person. It's a completely different but it, person. But it just ties into. No. Well, okay, I disagree. Oh, All right. So, so I no. thought it was. So, no, no. So I, I, I know why you think that because I've seen this movie enough times to know. It's why the you quick think. flash. It's the, the quick flash. In That's the what Asylum. Made, yeah, it, 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 where he's in the... Uh, I love fucking talking about this movie. All right, good. This is going to be a good <laughs> episode. Gonna say. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see where Ryan goes off with this. Yeah, Because we, we'll see. We finally have conflict. Okay. I love it. Go ahead. It's, it's not conflict. Okay. It's debate about no. a movie we both love. We, I, okay. It's not so conflict. Sammy was a real patient that uh, that Leonard dealt with. 
when he sold uh, or when he was dealing, when he was a claims adjuster or whatever for um, an insurance company. So he was, he, it was his job to investigate these claims and find out if the insurance company had to pay the insurance money. Mm-hmm. Sammy was a real patient that he had who had interrogate amnesia. They tested him. They couldn't find anything physical wrong with him. They said it had to be psychological. Couldn't cover it. I'm sorry. The claim only covers physical damage. So that's that's what Leonard's role was to play in this. Now, when Teddy was fucking with his head at the end of the slash middle of the movie, mm-hmm. he Teddy knows enough about the Sammy Jenkins story because that's all fucking Leonard talks about. Because he's got this tattoo, which I have on my hand, which says, remember Sammy Jenkins. Holy shit, I never noticed that, but yes. very fucking nice, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, you do love this movie. I do love this movie. Holy and, shit. <laughs> and he, he has this remember Sammy Jenkins tattoo on his hand. And to him... It may, it means a lot of different things. It remembers it, it means have a system, right? Because Sammy lost his wife. Remember, yeah. at the end of the movie, he found that out. But it also means think about this story and what Sammy is going through because that's what you're going through. You have am interrogate amnesia, so it it means a number of things to him. That's why he has it in such a prominent place on his hand. It has his it's left hand, you know, like right where he can see it whenever he's doing whatever he's doing. So. It's an important tattoo. Among all these other tattoos he's got on his body, that's the number one that he picks because that's the one that has all this baggage about this other person who has lived a certain life, made bad decisions because they couldn't stay in control of their condition, but also has the same condition he has. So, of course, if you remember this person, you can remember everything that's going on and immediately come back to what the situation is. Why am I confused? Oh, remember Sammy Jenkins. So that's that's the whole point of why he has that tattoo. Ulterior debate, Ryan. Well, here's the thing. Um, before we even get into any debate, Christopher Nolan has a gimmick, and it is mystery. This is what he does with this movie. So he leaves them open, he leaves them ambiguous, open for discussion, that they can be read many ways, and I think Memento is one. I think it is ambiguous and mysterious enough when they do drop the stuff and and Christopher Nolan does kind of like the David Fincher thing like in Fight Club where he alludes to this even before it happens like you see several flashes where real quick Sandy Sammy Jenkins is replaced with Guy Pierce or something like just like a quick yeah 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 that happens towards the end when uh when when um Teddy is fucking with his head. No, no, I and think somebody walks by and you see yeah. it looks like there's a Leonard flash earlier on too that yes. kind of alludes to it. Well, I there's the one where he's pinching it. his wife. Remember, he's yes. like, yeah, he's like, my wife like doesn't have diabetes. But remember, that all happens during the same mm-hmm. sequence. That happens. Both those two events happen at the end. But the wife pinch does show up earlier on no too. no no that happens during that happens at the end when they're in the wife pinch building. happens earlier there, on. and then yeah. and then it comes he's back de- and he's it, describing it, it to yes. um i do remember that natalie very vividly he's describing her to natalie it's, it's yes. like a quick no no he back. pinched her yes yeah. but but what i'm saying is the one where it he's turns into the insulin shot where it's the insulin that's shot later. that yeah. happens yes, yes. okay so there's two there's two parts that happen that are contrary to leonard's memory and yeah. they both happen during the Teddy conversation at the end of the movie slash the beginning of the movie. They are yeah. the pinch con- the pinch happening, which is a- and the diabetes, and when the person is walking by Sammy Jenkins and it changes to Leonard. Those two things happen at the same point at the at the end when Teddy is fucking with his head. Sure, sure. And that's when Leonard is questioning: Is is am I who I am? Is this reality? But I also am think I, that's because am I not am Leonard I am I Leonard is, or am I Sammy? Leonard is the epitome of the unreliable narrator. So he by is. that point in the movie, we can trust Teddy almost as much as we can trust Leonard because this movie doesn't it holds its cards and it makes you unsure of all the characters so by that point i don't think it is clear to say definitively one way or the other like teddy's right or leonard's right well let, let because me, they have both proven to be yes erroneous i agree with you there so I think however but there is way. one person who is a reliable narrator you know what his name is no go ahead christopher nolan oh damn it how 
<laughs> How? Explain, explain that. In Christopher Nolan's head, there is a canonical version of what is going on here. Has he openly said one way or the other about it? Listen, this is a guy who works by mechanical means. This is a guy who knows what he's doing and has this very specific way of doing it. If he's leaving things ambiguous like a coin turning it's on purpose. at the end of a movie, yeah. it's to intentionally mislead. But the reality is he has a canonical version of what he believes the story oh, yeah. actually like in, is. Inception, like he knows yes. one way or the other what whether Cobb is, is really asleep is. or not. Yes, correct. So that's what I'm saying is with, when it comes to Leonard, he has a canonical version of what's going on. So what I look at yeah. is I go, all right, Teddy, okay, true story. Teddy is not a reliable person. He's proven that throughout m- many sequences in the, earlier in, this, in the film. However, at the end, you know what he starts to do? He starts to fucking tell the truth. He starts to go, come on. And you know what he starts to do? He starts to monologue the way villains monologue. And he starts to tell the fucking truth. I manipulated you. Here's the photo that proves yeah. I manipulated you. He starts to tell so the truth. So why would we doubt Teddy when he tells Leonard at the end when he's telling all these truths that Leonard is this person, that he's, there's no real John G, that this is all bullshit? Okay, the, the, he, the he answer is, like a villain. I hate to say this, but the answer is in his eyes. If you look at his eyes in that sequence, you can totally tell that he's bullshitting Teddy, like he's or just, bullshitting Leonard. Uh I, I don't know how to say he it. To he like looks around while he says it. He's like, like this in mm. a way that, like, just totally mm. indicates that he's just f- totally fucking with him. You got to remember, like, the stuff that he can prove, he has photographic evidence for. The stuff that he can't prove is literally practically everything mm. else. So we know that momentarily he tells the truth, and he's got the photographic evidence yeah. for it. And that's, you can tell the inflex, inflection of his, his voice that he's saying things a certain way. All right, you're falling asleep. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to interject. I've got some things to say, but yeah, I'm also say just some breathing. Stuff. Say some stuff. So I'm, I'm curious, at the end of the movie, Leonard has the tattoo over his heart. Is that real or is that fake? I think that's fake. Okay, that's just Leonard projecting his it's own memory. It says, I found him. Yes. Yes. Again, done ambiguously, and even though Christopher Nolan has in his head his own version, yeah. unless he says one way or the other, we'll never know. He makes it that way on purpose. So we do talk about it. I, well, I, I, that's, I mean, that's what my, I think his movies are. My meant other question to do. is who do you guys think is the worst character in this movie? Like, not, not, who is like, the. Like, as a person? Like, most despicable. Because me, on my first viewing, I think Natalie is the worst. Wow, that's a good question. But this is just Honestly, me? the way I read this movie, Guy Pierce, Lenny. Leonard? Is the worst. He doesn't like Lenny. His wife called him Lenny. Did you I know. That? <laughs> I did, <laughs> right, I did right, know right. this. <laughs> hey, that's true. The thing is, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't remember to forget her. <laughs> also, it was... Um, bu- yeah, well... I think I think Natalie is the word. I, she, do you think that she knew that she was setting Teddy up because uh, she hated Teddy because Teddy had her boyfriend killed? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, she's I, manipulating Leonard, but Teddy did the same thing. For but you know game. what? I, I you know what? I'm gonna say Teddy, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like Natalie's motivation. There was a few different motivations she had. One was self preservation because mm-hmm. she felt like these drug dealers are fucking dangerous people. My boyfriend just got killed. I'm fucking next. Okay. So it's self-preservation. Whereas Teddy, remember, Mm. it was the money in the trunk. He was all about money. And he was willing to get Jimmy to to, to die at the hands of Lenny for the money. His is about greed. Hers is about love. Well, hers, love, sure, but self-preservation. self-preservation. I really, yeah. thought, oh, I really feel like she feared for her she life. Didn't, she didn't really felt, care about Jimmy because as soon no. as Leonard showed up in Jimmy's clothes, she was like, Okay, I'll roll with this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think she was more worried about Teddy was going to kill her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think so she saw him as like she, some weird uh, drug hitman that was yeah. like, oh, I'm involved in this. Yeah. Now. Right. No. I'm yeah. fucked because I'm involved. Now I need to. And Dodd's involved and mm-hmm. I need to take care of Dodd and blah, blah, blah. So I, I don't necessarily blame Natalie. I yeah. get it uh, why she, she exists as a character and why she did what she did w- with Leonard. 
um, she she was hanging out with a drug dealer to begin with, mm. so she's probably not a very um, upstanding, upstanding citizen yeah. uh, as a to start off with. So uh, yeah, I'd I'd like to pause right here and just say, as we're talking about this movie, w- who do we find the most despicable? We all have very different answers. Yeah, and I think that alone is like worth praising a movie for yeah is that you can go in with different people and experience different things and i think that's noteworthy enough i think that deserves some credit and it's what we were talking about with spring breakers like spring breakers is a great movie because it promotes a lot of discussion like you came with very different viewpoints and so did i i think that's that's i praiseworthy for like any kind of media can can you can you give it that kyle Oh, yeah, I absolutely can. Can you give it again, that? You know, it's, again, I want to stress, I didn't hate this movie. I was just very... Yeah, but you, your text to me was mind. just like, eh, it's a movie. That's exactly, it was a movie. Like, I watched it. I'm in no hurry to watch it again. I got to wonder, though... I'm more hurried after talking to you I, guys. I, I got to wonder, like, is it a movie of its period? You That's kind of what I wondered, too. Uh, I don't it. think it is, because like, I yeah, saw but, it long after it came out. Like, I saw it six but, years But here's afterwards. what I'm getting at, though, is... When I say that, though, not necessarily referring to the sort of style that it's filmed in mm-hmm. or anything like that, but more like we become more com- more interested in more complexity over time. Yeah, and uh, we're we're interested in stories that are more and more complex. How do you explain Transformers making billions of dollars? And, well, people are also stupid as fuck. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's also. I mean, but that's as that's no. As I'm not saying that's. Get, I'm not though. saying that's a, a the barometer memento, of the memento of, of makes successful. the same amount of money as Transformers. No, Memento no. made nothing. No, exactly. That's no, right. but so but memento no. What I'm saying is this is though. Lost, I'm uh, saying as far as movies no that um, movies that tickle that um, I'm being um, impressed by the complexity of the film. Okay, um, so you're saying Memento Kyle has is probably a seen film. films that that he feels like films or or stories that he feels like probably more well, yeah, teasingly interesting in the and as far as complexity. I like that you bring concerned. that up because that's my saying argument after the when I finally saw Requiem. Yeah, mm. I had seen so many other things that like probably were derivative of that. Well, and sure. not only derivative, like you know the big thing people talk about with Requiem is the shocking and like. I can't believe the terrible things that happened to this yeah. guy. But by that time, I'd seen Antichrist. I'd seen fucking Cannibal Holocaust. I'd seen a Cer- <laughs> like all these other movies oh, that like fuck. way Cerberto. way worse things uh, happen yeah. to people. Man. And then you get you to know? the ass to ass scene. I, I, and you're like, yeah, eh. it's like I've Dude, seen I, porno I, with worse things. Yeah. Dude, I, ass to ass scene. I, I, I was having like. I was feeling ho- horrible reading the description of, of Serbian, s- yeah. Serbian film. That movie oh, was God, yeah. I didn't even. Up, I have man. never even seen that movie, but I just read Ooh, some of the things buddy. that happened in that, and I was oh, like, fuck, "Good God. lord, no! There's, like, there's even, no way like, I would watch that." Antichrist is sort of like the holy grail of this podcast because we talk about it so because it, it is like seriously the most mainstream fucked up movie that somebody could watch because I mean it's even on Hulu. <laughs> Like yeah, I mean, I I just have no interest in watching those kinds. Yeah, of Yeah, it's just. It's, but I but hey, you know, free speech. But again, by the make time whatever you want. By the make. time I yeah. got to like Requiem, like I was like, yeah, you're like yeah, it's a snooze fest. Right? But uh, by by I, in I 2001, think 2002, eight millimeter, eight millimeter, yeah, meh. yeah, fuck, I've I've <laughs> seen <laughs> people die on the internet in real life. Like I I am right. numb to this. Yeah. But like for real, like I don't know, like I. I get what Memento was trying to do, and I'm sure it was really cool at that point. Right, we're talking 17 years ago at this yes, point. Yes, I know. That's it, good it, lord, and that's that's pretty fucking wild. But, yeah. Um, what I'm curious, like, I don't know if you have, but you had mentioned you had seen it in the chronological order. Does that I have? Yeah. Does that change the appreciation of it? Because I do want to yeah. watch it again in that order. Have you seen wow. this? No, and I don't want to. No? Really? No, I think the movie is perfect as it is. I love the transition, how it is in the film, and I think yeah. it's perfect. And, and it keeps it interesting. I think uh, the the best part of this movie is that it is told non-chronologically. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I, uh, in fact, I would say the preferred watching order is, is, still? The, is still the okay. order that it, it, it is in. Um, I, I would call the chron- chronological version like an extras kind of thing, okay. like like watching okay. uh, a director's cut or, or something like that, where it's just like, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Huh. Um, oh, that's cool. Oh, I didn't catch that. I didn't think of it that way. See, that, my, that's kind of the way you should go into that kind of watching. The reason I wanted to, I want to see it that other way is because I, I feel like 
all, all the big twists that Memento had coming, I, I kind of saw coming. Like, did you? Like when Carrie Ann Moss shows up and she's all beaten up, I was like, oh, I bet he actually did that. Oh, then, no, I never and then did I, was it. Like, I thought those were very clever But see, surprises. that's the thing. You've I, seen it ex- exactly, after I mean, having yeah. probably seen way more complicated so stuff. I've, I but at the time maybe, when I saw Memento yeah, 10 so, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that, yeah. again... That's my thing. That also where, where I'm speaks about probably overhyped. that it wasn't connecting to you 100% either. Because yeah. I feel like if you're ever in a movie and you're predicting outcomes, it's because you're not engaged in the movie. So I think that's probably the movie part of probably too. lost was, you a little bit somewhere even before so, that. Maybe so. But yeah. even, I was like, uh, I know I know Leonard beat her up because we're, we're, <laughs> right. we're doing these twist things. And yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be a twist that he's the one that gave yeah. her these bruises because she's playing it off. And I don't know. I, again, it's not bad. It just, it, yeah. to me, it didn't grab me. And maybe it was, it is a period. But I gotta or a say, film of props time. that you figured that out beforehand, though. Like, eh. that's cool because I'm not sure if I figured that out the first time. I don't mm-hmm. remember if I figured out anything. I was very much like, "What the fuck's going on?" <laughs> I mean, it really took me a couple of watches, like, to fully the one, appreciate uh, what was going. on. It took on. me like two or three black and white scenes before I realized that, like, oh wait, these are gonna mesh, aren't they? See, I didn't get that yeah, at all. I, I kind of figured that was. I was like, "This oh, is no. because of the fact that it's 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 black and white." I was like, "This is something different," so I need to be paying attention differently. Uh-huh. And then I started to realize, like, "Oh, he's in the hotel. This is all interconnect. It's not jumping around as much. We're gonna meet." And then, mm-hmm. and then it did. It, but then it did. see, that's the mm-hmm. thing. I didn't see that coming the first time. And again, you know, maybe I wish I would have seen this forever ago. Yeah. But, but that makes um, me wonder about the enduring kind of like, will this be something that can endure or maybe not? Because well, and again, it, it might do better to, to a non film nut that still has not uh, somehow seen this movie. I'll also say, I don't know how much necessarily that ruins a movie, like being yeah. able to predict what happens. Because, like, if you see a spoiler for a movie and then you watch the movie and you know what's going to happen, but it's done well, do you fucking do you I've care? I've seen the spoiler for Splice and I still really want to see Split. it. Split. Split, sorry. Splice Adrian Brody. I don't know though because I'm the daughter. kind of person who doesn't like to see any spoilers whatsoever. I'm, I'm always yeah. like you, and but I, this, this motherfucker I've ruins seen... everything for himself. I do. It is really I, bad I, habit. I'll it's tell you bad. the worst one that was ever ruined for me. I saw a spoiler for the fucking Sixth Sense in the, <gasps> oh, in the oh, newspaper no. when I was a kid. Oh God! <laughs> and as a teenager, I saw the spoiler for the Sixth God, that's Sense. That's the worst. Oh, it was the worst. I, t- I work with this fucking <laughs> this fucking ass. That I don't even know if he inadvertently did it, but he ruined Game of Thrones and The Sopranos, yep. both like two huge twists. Dude, Game of Thrones isn't even over, man. But Come on, I, I had the I purple the wedding game. ruined for me. Oh yeah, the purple wedding. The purple wedding. There is no then, purple wedding. Well, in the book, no, it's the red wedding. No, no, it's there's the red, the red wedding. wedding, and then there's the purple one oh, with Joffrey. Oh, where he Joffrey. Trans- well, yeah. okay. That's what they call okay. it. But like oh, that was right, ruined right. to me. Like we were talking about something before, and I was like, just as Joffrey, like before the that season where what happened, I was like, I this kid just fucking bugs me. He's like, Well, don't worry about him for too long. I'm like, God are you damn it, fucking you kidding? You fucking prick. You <laughs> fucking did that, and sure enough, like three episodes in. And I was like, God damn it. Although I saw some kind of study that said that people that, that believe it or not, they tested out people who uh, found out spoilers beforehand, and people who didn't enjoy found, it more, and feel found out that people that found out the spoilers enjoyed it more. Really? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why, I but that's awesome. just what they found out. I've realized this: if I don't know what's going to happen, my brain is occupied trying to think about oh, what's yeah. going to, to happen it out. and trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if I know going in, and this is why I think I like fucking Marvel movies because, like, I know those stories. Like, they're like yeah. mythology to me. I can turn my brain off and be like. Oh yeah, yeah. Vision's gonna show up in this one for sure. Yeah, because we're doing this. Yeah, and, oh I mean, yeah, this is gonna happen, and I can just enjoy it. I feel like you're gonna enjoy it in a different way mm-hmm. than a story you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I I think it is. I think it is a very different way. Like I just watched a movie called Get Out recently. It's fantastic. Have you seen that? Did yeah. You, did you like that? I really like. I it. had no idea what was gonna happen in that movie. Did you see the trailers beforehand? I did, but no, I, I not not from that sense. But okay, is Get Out the racially motivated one? Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's, dir- it's directed by Jordan Peele. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you seen it yet? I have not, but I want to. But I've, but, I've but heard there's but a trailer. So the trailer offers the the 
the kind of surface setup. Level I know kind setup, of, but it doesn't really trailer, explain what's going on. Just from the internet, I understand mm-hmm. that like yeah. it's, it's a black guy that shows up at a white family and yeah. things go south yeah. for the black guy. That's good. That that's about all you that's, need to know. Really yeah, I, and I want about see it. what's going on. But then like when Jordan you Peele. see the movie, then you're like, oh shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's enough distraction to keep you forgetting that you are, know about that shit. So, and it's tight too. It's it, like 90 oh, yeah. minutes. Like they don't stretch anything. Is out. it really like, only 90? Minutes? It hits, yeah, it's fucking really? paced so well. Damn. Yeah, so it's, the way that it, I no, it, it, it moves along, it's a, a very pace. efficient yeah. movie. I've, I've, I've adapted in my mind. I, I present it to myself as it's a modern version of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. It's like Stepford Wives with Guess Who's Coming okay. to Dinner. Okay, okay, it's, but there's, there's some twists. Okay. There are some twists that, that you haven't probably yeah. seen. I just want people yeah. to under appreciate. It's similar. My it's not. You know what? Exactly. You, know, you, know, you know what? I want to. You know I what I'm going to say? But I'm, only the Ashton Kutcher version let, with let, Bernie let, Mac. Where they flip it. They flip it's a white it, dude. Yeah. To the black family dinner. Let me tell you what. <laughs> let me tell you what it reminded me a little bit of. Do you guys remember the Outer Limits? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little Outer Limits to okay. me. Okay. Like, yeah. like when things are just slightly turned. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, Twilight Zone was was only willing to go so far, and Outer Limits I felt like was willing to take it a little bit further, and that's where I feel like to go a little sillier, a little zany. Twilight Zone yeah. was a little bit more straight laced, yeah. like okay. uh, tight okay. collar. Like we're yeah. gonna be professional about this, right? But Outer Limits was just like it was we're gonna be it silly. This time. it was this willing to go a little bit further from her hearing aid, and we're yeah, just gonna go yeah. with this. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it, it goes into that territory. It's it a little zanier, but and Jordan Peele being of Key and Peele is yeah. fantastic at com- comedy and like getting that timing yeah. down perfectly. Oh, yeah. So this it movie is as hilarious. funny as it is it was suspenseful. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay, so it is actually also hilarious. It was it's, hilarious. I gotta watch yeah. it. Now. It was it's a good like movie. Horror comedy. Yeah, it's, horror comedy. You know what? It, it was like uh, if Shaun of the Dead was like about racism. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Instead yeah. of zombies. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's basically it. It is. It is. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. I mean, so Memento. Man. Memento. You guys <laughs> yeah. You guys would both recommend it. Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 we would. I think it's I it's one of those movies that I just think is a celebration of movies and why they can be good and it offers surprises. I'm I'm shocked that this late into the game you didn't have any surprises and that you were able to kind of predict what was going to happen because I think it's edited and done in such a way that it is refreshing and it even still 10 17 years later so I, yeah. I think it still is pretty yeah, refreshing. There's really not m- many movies that now nowadays that try yeah. to be that ambitious. No, so no. they're editing uh, unless it's. Fucking Nolan himself, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. He's the only one who seems to care well, about that. Uh, well, there was uh, what's it called? Um, Inception, which Inception was very me- memento like, very and, very, and very prestige well a little bit too. Prestige yeah, is yeah. another very challenging. Yeah, edited right. I will t- movie. I will tell you both right now. I will watch this movie again. I, I give it some time. I, I came up here expecting not to, but he, here's my reasoning why. Um, because based off something you said, where. If you don't know it going in, you're constantly trying mm-hmm. to stay a step ahead of this movie. I did that, I feel, the first time through. Yeah. So yeah. if I watch it again, I can maybe more appreciate it and take yeah. in what it's trying to offer me at a surface level. I'd recommend any of these kind of slow burn movies. Go back and always watch them again. Give them what? a second chance when you're not trying to guess As that again, you can you just know, kind of take I, in the, the movie. The one thing we always agree on, we both are big fans of the slow burn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but again, like that... I, I, I want to give it another chance yeah. just based on both of your emphatic appreciation and the fact that I feel maybe if I'm not looking to stay ahead of it this time, I will see the breakdowns of these mechanics that you guys are really into about like taking the guts out of the movie. And so, let me say the performances too. I mean, I think I, again, I love Joe Teddy. Pantoliano, oh my God. Carrie Ann Moss, I love that. Guy Pierce all did. In in my opinion, some of the best work they've ever done in their careers. Like Agreed. it's just fantastic work, and uh, Christopher Nolan will get that out of people. I for don't know. Sure. It, it just uh, yeah the the Not the lines are delivered so pitch perfect to me. I mean, mm-hmm. like I can't imagine they all fill their archetype. Yeah. To like, I can't imagine the mm-hmm. characters being anything other than Leonard what they, being the confused. Yeah. And 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 striving for the answers. Mm-hmm. Teddy being the confident, and just I love 
every time he he talks about the Sammy Jenkins story, he's like, "Yes, I fucking know Sammy." Yeah, yeah. I fu- I'll tell you, Sammy. You want him? You want me to tell you, Sammy? Because mm-hmm. I fucking heard it a hundred times, Leonard. Mm-hmm. I know this story. I love that mm-hmm. aspect. And Carrie Ann, like, I she kind of bothered me the way she's like, she's questioning, and then she is so fucking hard against Leonard when she has that breakdown on him. Like, I can call you whatever you want because you're not going to fucking remember it, you piece of retarded shit. And then she leaves, and then she does do that, and then he doesn't remember it. Right. And then she's immediately manipulating him and turning him against Teddy because I think she's turning him towards Teddy because she knows Teddy is the reason that her boyfriend's dead. That's right. So she's, She knows the connection. Yes. And so at the end of the day... Both Teddy and Natalie are in a game to control Leonard to eventually kill one of the other two. And by the way, can I say who one, one unsung hero of this movie is uh, the guy who plays um, Sammy Jenkins, which is... Yeah, Steven uh, Tobolowsky. Yeah, uh, he's fucking great. To- Tobolowsky. And he also played Needle Nose Ned, Ned the Head, on and Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. Yeah. Uh, so it's another character that I absolutely love because uh, mm-hmm. I love Groundhog Day. So, um, yeah, Stephen Tobolowsky did, he's fucking did a great. fantastic he's job. He's great in everything. Sammy Jenkins. Mm-hmm. I love him in... Yeah, he's a great character actor. Uh, Silicon Valley. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's fucking yeah, great in yeah, that, yeah, man. Yeah, you're he's, right. He's you're good right. on uh, the Goldbergs as the principal. Yeah. He's good whenever he shows up. He's fucking amazing. I love yeah. Stephen Tobolowsky. Yeah. So. He had a documentary, I can't remember the na- name of it, that came out last year, which is just him doing stand-up, like a stand-up lecture from a college talking about like his acting career and everything yeah. and it's fantastic yeah he's very I would love to check that out he's, he's, it's uh, on Hulu I don't remember the name of it but yeah. I, like, I like him so mm. alright man well Dan as always man thank you for fucking having of us of course I fucking love when we have you on the show man this has been you're a just, blast you're just fucking fun to hang out with and talk to so <laughs> you guys I awesome. will say you've turned me I will give Memento a second chance and I will okay. tell you right. what, what I feel about second run through so sure yeah. As always, I'm Kyle. I'm Ryan. Hey, I'm Dan. All right, thanks, guys. We'll (laughs) catch you next time. Hi, this is Ryan. And if you liked what you just saw or listened to, please check us out at experiencegrind.com. Find us on facebook.com slash experiencegrind at Twitter over at twitter.com slash expgrindpodcast. Kyle's tweeting out a lot of stuff all the time. And then you can always find us, our podcast, on iTunes, Stitcher, Twitch, or even on YouTube. Find us. Just search Experience Grind Podcast. We don't have a channel yet. Stuff's super easy to find. But please subscribe. We'll get there to you. Make it even easier. And as always, if you like what you saw, we cover many games and episodes every week. There's sure to be something you love. And as always, grind out.